Adam, their wives, community <coughs> members. First of all, it's nice to be back to visit. It's nice to be back. It's, uh, I have uh, warm memories from uh, Toronto and all the wonderful people and the wonderful community that's uh, led by Rabbi Yasayag and the other of Animis. It's really a great honor. It's very special. You have a very special community over here. And you shouldn't take that for granted. So it's really, but I'm glad to be back. I'm happy I made this trip over. I'm happy I made this trip. I mean, I mean the weather outside, I'm not happy for, but it's fine. I'll take a plane tomorrow morning. But uh, I'm, I'm truly very, very happy to be here. This is a the switch. His father is one of the prominent Moroccan Rosh Yeshivot in Bnei Brak. So I met him, and basically he told me he doesn't follow so much Moroccan Minagim. He doesn't see their sources. He doesn't understand where they come from. Doesn't say, he doesn't understand their authenticity. That same Shabbat, I spoke to someone else, a friend of mine. He was actually born in Tangiers. He's from Larache. You know where that is? He was, and then he, he moved, he, he, there's no hospital there, so he was born in Tangiers. Or maybe no good hospital there. And he said when he became religious, also he thought that, uh, I don't know, where did the Minagim come from? He really didn't really connect so much to the Minagim. So he said until somebody showed him what the source of the customs are, what the source of all the Minagim, where they come from, and then he started keeping Minagim and he started keeping the Hanachot and the Torah according to what his fathers and grandfathers and great grandfathers did for generations. So the truth is, anybody who spends a little bit of time on this subject and starts looking into the sources and starts seeing where our customs and Hanachot, like Rabbi Yassai pointed out, I'm not talking about folklore and how to eat your couscous. I'm talking about more, more the halachot of uh, what bracha to say on this and, and what did they do in that case. When, when one starts delving more into these halachot, he sees that not only their basis is strong, it's, it's coming from very early sources, much more based than, all, than, than a lot of the halachot that people assume that they pick up on the road as they, as they, as they get closer to religion. And really, there are two approaches, there are two schools of thought. The first school of thought is that, okay, you know what? We were in Morocco, it was very nice while we were, while we were there. Now we're over here and we're in a new country, we're not living in Morocco anymore, so why should we follow what our ancestors have, have, have followed? That was, that was their world, it's our world. Let's open up new, new books and find new things. Number one, it's coming from a little bit of a rebellious point of view. You know, I want to be like my parents, I'm not my grandparents. It's coming from a little bit of a, of, a, of, a, of a rebellious streak in a person. Number two, it's against halacha. The halacha tells you, it's written in the halacha, that the halachot that your parents keep, not only you should keep, not only it's suggested to keep, you're obligated to follow the halachot and minagim that your parents have, and that they come from their grandparents and their parents, and their parents. So, I don't understand when people say, well, you gotta start something new. It's just false according to Halakha. Second, they're missing a key element in Judaism. The whole point, the whole essence of Judaism is connecting back to our past, the Har Sinai. They're connecting back to our past, the Har Sinai. I don't know if you know the famous story, there was once a Rav who got on a plane, it was, he, was, uh, he was sitting next to a professor, not very, uh, not, 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 I don't know if he was Jewish, I don't know if he was religious, atheist or not. It sounded like he was an atheist, and they were, they were speaking, and the rabbi had his beliefs, and this uh, professor had his beliefs, until the rabbi had a lot of grandchildren, and some of them were on the airplane, and they were kept on going over, Saba, what can we get for you? Saba, what can we get for you? 
And this professor was looking, he says, I can't, my gra- can't, can't get my grandchildren to say hello to me. And you have your, your grandchildren going over to you? He says, well, listen, professor, you believe the more you go back that you come from monkeys. So well, what is there to look back to? Are you going to more to be more of a monkey? By me, the more we go back, the people, the, 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 the Rabbanim, the Tzadikim, we get closer to Harsina. Of course they want to be closer to, to the previous generation. I would think the essence of our religion is connecting to our past. And once we, we, we validate, we understand, we see the wisdom in our forefathers, we see that it's not only that, there's much more. So not only from a halachic point of view, but also from a, from a theological point of view, that's what our religion is about. You know, in 2005, three weeks before I moved to Los Angeles, I, I, I lived in Los Angeles, and I, so two, three weeks before I was living in Eretz Israel, I published uh, Magen Avot. Magen Avot is basically a work that is documents and sources where our halachot from our Rabbanim, where they come from. And I didn't really get an opportunity to stay in Eretz Yisrael to see how it would develop because I came to LA. And in LA there was different issues. People weren't exactly dealing with those issues. They were dealing with other issues. Whether the surf is up that day, other issues. <laughs> they, were, they, were, they, were, they weren't dealing with those issues. So I didn't get to see if with the proper development in Eretz Yisrael, but from what I was told, people were thirsty to connect back to their minhagim. And not only my book, there's many other books in Eretz Yisrael that came out that started no less than a revolution. People in Eretz Yisrael started coming back and following their minhagim. Synagogues started opening up, uh, the different communities, who were, who, who, we would get questions all the time. We want to follow our minhagi. And that, and that just kept on going and going and it's growing till today. You have no idea what's going on, that people are thirsty. You take it for granted. I'm from Montreal. It was, it's, it's taken for granted. Of course, we follow our customs. Toronto, we take it for granted. And then as he said, they're mixed in a melting pot and nobody knows what to do really. And they want to have a certain sense of direction and they just need somewhere to tell them that. Around 2006, I told myself, I'm going to start translating this in English. Why not? I'm here. I don't have, I don't have the, the time. I'm not the best writer in English, although my mother-in-law is an English professor. But, but uh, she wasn't going to edit. She wasn't going to translate my book. It's not a good idea. <laughs> so so I, I, I told myself, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to come in and, and start finding uh, somebody to translate in English. So I found someone, started translating in English. I got the seed money to do it. Let me start, I started translating. Actually, that person was actually originally from Toronto who gave me that money, Arna Picasis. It was, it was a long time ago, and, he, and, and, and that seed money started. I had no idea from Toronto. I knew, I knew who the Maple Leafs made. I didn't hear about Toronto besides that. I'm from Montreal, but I didn't know anybody in the community in, in Toronto. So I started translating, and then one day somebody comes to me and says, hey, do you know that there's these people in Toronto, these young students in Toronto, that are sending out daily halacha emails and they're using your book, they're translating it and they're using it. I said, I don't believe you, you showed me the emails. <laughs> so I, I reached out to one of them. It was Yossi Azula. Is Yossi Azula here? 